Welcome to the math record. Today I'll be covering the ICTM State 2016 Division 8 Geometry. I'll be going through every single question from 1 to 20 as usual, and in the description I'll be timestamping every single question. Okay, let's begin. Number 1. Square ABCD is inscribed in a circle with radius 12, so we have a circle, and we have a square, ABCD. ABCD, and it has a radius of 12. Determine the exact perimeter of the square. So if this is 12 and this is 12, when you have a um, circle that circumscribes a square, it's actually going to become a 90 degrees for this angle, which makes sense because if you draw two more, then these all have to be the same, so they're all 90 degrees, right? 360 divided by 4 is 90. So if this is 90 degrees, then you could use the 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? Because these are the same. So this would be 12 square root 2. So the perimeter is 48 square root, 48 square root 2. Right, because it's just 12 squared 2 times 4. Okay, so that's number 1. Should be pretty simple. Number 2. In triangle ABCD, I mean uh, ACD, sorry. BE is parallel to CD, so these are parallel. And AB is 6 and BC is 4. Determine the ratio of area of this smaller triangle to this larger triangle. Okay, and write it in K colon W. So, how you... To find the ratio, it's always just the side length's ratio squared. So it's just 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, and then square that, and that should be your ratio. So simplify this one first, so that's 3 over 5 squared, so that's equal to 9 over 25. Write in the correct form, 9, 25, and that's your answer. 9 colon 25. Okay, number 3. A 25-foot ladder is placed against a vertical wall of a building. The foot of the ladder is 7, foot, is seven feet from the base of the building. So we have a ladder and their building, and then we have 25, right? This is going to be our building, but I've just got to draw a side of it. And then uh, this is 25. So the foot is 7. Just know your Pythagorean triples. This is the 7, 24, 25. So this is 24. Okay. If the top of the ladder slides down 4 feet, so 24 minus 4 is 20. So this is 20. And this one's still 25 because that's the length of our ladder. So what is this uh, length now? Well, um, in, divide 25 by 5, so that's 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So it's going to be a 3, 4, 5, but it's going to be scaled up by 5, right? Because we divide by 5, so 3 times 5 is 15. So then the foot of the ladder slides out an additional k feet away. So from 15, uh, 7 to 15, we moved 8 away. So that's your answer. Number 3 is 8. Number 4. The diagonal of a square is x plus 3y. Okay, so that's our diagonal, x plus 3y. Um, a second square has an area that's twice of the uh, first square. So um, if, let's call this side length A. If this area is twice the amount of area of this one, then this one has to be square root 2a, right? Because the area of this is a squared, and then the area of this is square root 2a times square root 2a is 2a squared, right? So two times as much. So that means the perimeter of um, this uh, uh, square is 4 square root 2a, and the area of this one is 4 square root 4a, right? This is, just the area. Uh, this is just the area. I mean, perimeter is 4 square root 2a and 4a. So it's k times the perimeter of the first one, so 4 square root 2 of a divided by 4a, that's the k is equal to k. So divide by 4, divide by a, that means that's just square root 2. So number 4 squared 2. And that's it. So the x plus square plus 3y is just extraneous. Number 5. In circle A, um, let's draw, draw the circle. Uh, BAC is 90 degrees. And AB is 12. So if this is 12, this is 12 because those are um, radiuses. Determine the perimeter of a sector A of this sector. Okay. So we got this too. Now we just need to find this section. So uh, this is just a circumference, but a fourth of it is 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees out of 360, so um, 2 pi radius. So 2 times pi times our radius, which is 12, divided by 4. So that's 3 times 2 is 6 pi. So add them together, that's 24 plus 6 pi. And that is your answer for number 5. Okay. Number 6. Uh, point P lies in the E... In the interior equilateral triangle ABC. So imagine that was equilateral. Right, I'm not the best artist, so 
these three side lengths are the same, and we have a point P inside here. Uh, the area of ABC is 108 square 3, and the distance from P to AB is uh, 8 square 5, 8 minus square 5. So this distance is 8 minus square root 5. And the distance from P to BC is equal to 3 plus square 5. And determine the distance from P to AC. So we need to find this distance. Let's call that D. Okay. So we're going to use something called Viviani's theorem. Viviani's theorem. I'm not sure if that's how you spell it or that's exactly what it's called. But something like this. So uh, the idea of the theorem is basically the three distances from one point inside the triangle. Equilateral triangle specifically. Those three distances, add those up together. That should equal to height. That's, that's always true. So what's the height? of our equilateral triangle. Well, all you need to know is we know the area is 108 square root 3. So um, the area of an equilateral triangle always follows the formula x squared square root 3 divided by 4. I'm sorry, that looks kind of bad. Square, x squared square root 3 divided by 4. Right, where x is the side length of the equilateral. So divide by square root 3, divide by 4, um, actually multiply by 4. So that will be 432 equals x squared. So square root this, um, that's going to become 144, uh, 12 square root 3 x. And that's your x. So that is our site length for the equilateral. So let's delete all this because we don't need it anymore. So we know that the site length is 12 square root 3. So the hypotenuse, since this is the um, six is equilateral, a um, the hypotenuse, the height of a um, Equilateral triangle is square root three times two square root three over two times the side length. So that divided by two, that's a six. Six times square root three times square root three is three. So three times uh, six is eighteen. So using Viviani's theorem, that means eight minus square root five plus three plus square root five plus d is equal to eighteen. So the positive and negative square root five cancel each other out, and that adds up to eleven. So eighteen minus eleven is seven. So that's your answer for number six. The answer for is uh, seven. Okay, number seven. The volume of a sphere is 1,000 pi divided by three cubic inches. The radius of this sphere increases at a rate of one tenth inch per second. So after eight seconds, the percent increase in the volume is k percent. Okay, so use four significant figures and don't use percent. So um, the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi radius cubed. So that's 1,000 uh, pi divided by 3 pi. So cancel out the 3, cancel out the pi, divide by 4, so that's 250. So the radius cubed, so it's the cube root of 250 is your radius. So um, we need to find the percent increase in volume. So we have to find the new radius of the circle. So uh, it increases at a rate of 1 tenth inch per second with 8 seconds. So it increased by 8 tenth uh, of an inch. So it's 3 square root. 250 plus 8 tenths. That's our new radius. So to get the new volume, it's just pi radius uh, cubed. So pi, I mean 4 thirds pi radius cubed. And then um, to find the percent increase, we divide that by our um, original one, which our original volume is 1000 pi divided by 3. Okay, so cancel out the 3s, cancel out the pi's. And then divide by 4, so that's 250 on the bottom. So now we just use our calculator. So cube root of 250 plus 8 divided by 10 to the power of 3 divided by 250. And um, you should come out at something like 1.431405-ish rounded. Um, but we don't need that much significant figures anyways. We need 4. So what you're going to do is that this one tells us that it increased in volume, which makes sense, right? Because you added this number. So all yet, because um, when you talk about percent increase, uh, what you do is that you don't have to talk about this one anymore because it's implied this increase. So it's you just ignore the one. So then um, for percentage, we got to multiply by 100 because this is a decimal. So we got to move to decimal places. So that's 43.14%, right? And that's four significant figures, right? That's why I didn't write the 0, 05. So that's your answer, 43.14. Okay. And now number eight. 
A circle passes through the vertices of a triangle with a uh, sides of lengths 7.5, 18, and 19.5. The area of the circle can be represented as k divided by w pi square inches, where k and w relatively prime positive integers. Determine k plus w. So um, let's write the side lengths out. So 7.5, um, 18, and 19.5. Okay. So first we need to find the, to find the um, area of the circle, we first have to find the radius. And specifically when you have a uh, triangle and when you have a circle that goes through this triangle, it, this circle is called the circumradius. And to find the circumradius, you actually have to use something called the, uh, I mean circumcircle, circumcircle, which is, you have to use something called the circumradius. And the circumradius is calculated by a times b times c divided by 4 times the area. So um, this is the area of the equilateral of the triangle. It doesn't have to be equilateral. So any triangle. A and b, c are the side lengths. So it would be 7.5 times 18 times 19.5 divided by 4 times the area. So what's the area? Well, to calculate the area, all you have to do is just have um, use something called Hero's formula or Heron's. I'm not exactly sure. Um, it basically just tells us um, take the square root of the semi perimeter of semi perimeter minus the first length, semi perimeter minus the second, and semi perimeter minus the third. Okay, and take uh, and then square root it. That should be the area. So that's a. Okay, so the semi perimeter is seven point five plus eighteen plus nineteen point five divided by two. So area equals um divide equals twenty. Semi perimeter is 22.5 times uh, 22.5 minus uh, 7.5, 15 times 4.5 and times 3. All right, so then multiply those together, take the square root, and you should get an area of 67.5. Now we can plug it back in here, so 67.5, and now we can find the radius. So 7.5 times 18 plus 19.5 divided by 4 divided by 67.5 and that should be your radius which is 9.75 and now to find the area is pi radius uh, squared but since they already gave us uh, pi in our question we just need to square this and that should be equal to and then we should convert that to a, a fraction that should equal to 1521 divided by 16 so it should be 1537 and that's your answer for number eight. Okay. Number nine. The diameter of a circular base of a clear uh, right cylinder is four inches and the height is seven inches. The cylinder is lying on the ground along its lateral side. Okay. So lateral side. And it has a a diameter of two, uh, diameter of four, so the radius is two, and the height is seven. Uh, sliding on lateral side, so sliding like this, because that's lateral side, and the liquid is to be one inch tall, so somewhere like right here. Okay. The cylinder is then turned upright and then resting on one of the circular faces, so then it's turned like this, right? So now it's resting like this. So this radius 2, height is 7. And then determine the height of the liquid. So now we need to find the liquid, this height right now here. So first we need to find the volume of the liquid. So uh, if you look at it like this, like that's your perspective, you're going to have a circle, right? And there's, um, this is our diameter. And this is where the water is at, right? So you're looking directly at it. You just see like a clear water. So to find the volume, it's just going to be um, area of the base times height. So area of the base times height is just going to be a um, this area times 7, right? So all we had to do, let's kind of draw that back. Actually, let's draw a bigger circle so then we can see this. Okay, and let's draw this. So we know that the radius is 2, and the height is at 1. So this has to be length of 1, and this is length of 2. OK, so we need to find this area. So let's kind of draw here, here. 
So we have to find the area of this sector, subtract it by this triangle to get the sector, to get that section. So what we're going to do is that we know this is a length 2, length 2, because that's radius. So that means this length is square root 3. So uh, since this is square root 3, that tells us that this angle is 60 degrees, and this is also 60 degrees. So that means this is 120 out of 360 of an entire circle. So the area of this section is just 120 divided divide by 360 times pi radius squared. Our radius is 2, so that's 4. And then subtract it by the area of our triangle, which is equal to um, 2 square root 3 times 1 is our height, and divide by 2 to get the area. So this is 1 third, so 5 pi, 4 pi divided by 3 minus uh, square root 3. And that's the area of this. Okay. So now we just need to find the volume. So we just need to multiply by 7. So let's delete all this because we don't need it. Okay. Multiply this by 7, and that should be our volume. And now we're going to use this volume to find our height. So that's equal to the area of this, I mean the volume of this liquid is this, just a cylinder. So it's got to be pi radius squared times height. So pi, sorry, this one, right, sorry, this is pi times radius squared, so 2 squared times height. And then we're looking for h, right? So we just have 4 pi divided by 3 minus square root 3 times 7 divided by 4 pi equals h. Okay, so going to your calculator, 4 times pi divided by 3 minus square root 3 times 7 divided by 4 divided by pi and um, round it to the nearest tenth, so that's 1.4. Okay, and that's your answer for number 9. Number 10. Uh, quadrilateral ABCD is a trapezoid where AB and CD are parallel. All right. So that's just the general idea of a trapezoid. I just kind of draw the rest of this. And uh, EDC is 4. And EAB is 9. Determine the area of the trapezoid. So um, since these two uh, are parallel, what you need to know about parallel with trapezoids is that this triangle and this triangle are similar. And the reason is because since these two are parallel, that means this angle and this angle are the same, this angle and this angle are the same, and these two are the same because of vertical angles. So that means these triangles are the same, are similar. So that tells us that if the area is 4 ninths, that means 4 ninths square rooted, that's 2 thirds. So the ratio of the side length is 2 thirds. So that's going to be 2x to 3x, and let's call this 2y, so this is 3y, right? Because the bigger one has to go with the bigger area. So if you kind of think about it, let's focus on this triangle right here. I'll redraw it. So this area is 4, and this is 2x, and this is 3x. Um, when you have triangles that are split like this, right? We have this big triangle split to this these two. If we have this side length uh, and this side length, what you need to know is that the area is just going to be scaled up by that amount. So 2 to 3 is multiplied by 1.5. So 4 times 1.5 is 6. So this area is going to be 6. In the same case here, 2 to 3, that means this area, 4 multiplied by 1.5 is 6. So the area of the entire trapezoid is 4 plus, uh, 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 9. So that's going to be equal to 25, right? 10, 16, 25. And that's the first 10. Number 11. Determine the exact area of the convex quadrilateral of vertices 7, 3. Okay, so let's draw. So 7, 3, somewhere here. 15, 7, so somewhere here. 12, 3, so somewhere right here. And 10, 7, so somewhere right here. Okay, so what's that look like? It might be a parallelogram, right? Because this is 10, 7, 15, 7, so this is the same height. So this is at the 7. And this is at 7, 3, and this is 12, 3, so this is at 3. And 7 to 12 is 5. And um, 10 to 15 is 5. Okay, so it is a parallelogram. So the area of parallelogram is base times height, so base is 5. And the height is 7 to 3, so that's 4. So that, that's an area of 20. And that's your answer for number 11. Basically, just that simple. 
number 12. ABC is a right triangle. DEF is a equilateral triangle. Two of the angles of these triangles are chosen without replacement. Determine the probabilities both uh, pro determine the probability both chosen angles are acute. So for them to both be acute, um, let's find all the angles first. So a right triangle always have two acute angles and a 90 degrees. An equilateral is always six, all of them are 60. So they're all acute angles. So what's the probability of the first one is acute? Well, five, six. What's the probability the second is acute? Well, we already take one away, right? So we have five left. That means there's four acute. Multiply them together. That's two, that's three. So that is equal to two thirds simplified. That kind of looks a little bad, two thirds. And that's your answer for number 12. Number 13, line segment AB has midpoint M. Okay, so M is a midpoint of AB. Uh, the coordinates of A are 3 7 So let's draw something. Let's say 3 7 is like right here. And M is uh, 3 7 And M is 2 11 so somewhere right here. So that means B is like somewhere right here. So to find it, uh, we just had to keep track of these two. So 3 to 2 is 1. And then 7 to uh, 11 is 4. This is 1 to 4 also. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 11 plus 4 is 15. And that is your coordinate for B. And that's basically it for number 13. It's basically just that simple. OK, number 14. In the figure shown, um, triangle ABC and triangle DEF are equilateral in the ratio of the areas of uh, the bigger triangle to the smaller triangle is um, 2 to 1. So the figures have three lines of symmetry, AE, BF, and DC. And the ratio of, tri of the area of APZ to PDQ can be written as K plus W squared P divided by Q uh, in reduced and simplified radical form. Determine uh, K plus W plus P plus Q. OK, that's a mouthful. So let's kind of draw this picture, see how this looks. like this, rotate this around, and make it a little bigger, and a little bit more. OK, that's fine. So when they say they have three lines of symmetry, right? Line of symmetry right here, line of symmetry right here, and line of symmetry right here. What it kind of tells us is that this area, this area, this area are all the same, and this one, and this one, and this are all the same, because they have to be symmetrical, right? If even the placement, imagine this triangle was moved a little bit higher, then it's not going to be symmetrical, right? Because only this would be symmetrical, right? right? If this was moved this way, then only this would be symmetrical, but this would not be symmetrical, and this would not be symmetrical at all. So these have to all be the same area. So when I drew those lines, they all converge at one point. That point is called the centroid. And the centroid has a pretty nice property. So let's draw that point. So when you draw a line from here to here of this big triangle, the ratio of the centroid to this vertex is 2. And from here to here is 1. So it's 2 to 1 ratio. And it's the same case with the smaller one. It works for all triangles. So the ratio of the uh, vertex to the centroid is 2 to 1. OK, so what we have to do is um, we could just draw one big line. This is symmetrical at this point, so it's going to be one continuous line, and it goes through the centroid. And now we could just um, use a bunch of like uh, ratios to find out the, the ratio of the areas. OK, so we could, so if we want to find that ratio of this to this, we just find the ratio of this to this, because these two are exactly the same. So. Since we know the ratio of the areas are 2 to 1, that means the side length ratio is square root 2 to 1, actually. Because you have to square root 2 and square root 1, which is square root 2 and 1. So that means, let's call this entire side length is square root 2x. Let's call this one as x. So that tells us that if we want, let's find the side length first. So it's 2 to 1, right? So that means 2 plus 1 is 3. So this is 1 third of the total length, and this is 2 thirds of the total length. Right, this entire thing. So we need to split that up to this and this. So we can't find each individual part. Let's just find this one first. 
So the height of this is x times squared 3 divided by 2, right? Side length times squared over 2, because this is an equilateral triangle. So height of an equilateral triangle is this, times uh, one third ratio is equal to x squared root 3 divided by 6. So this is the side length. Okay. So let's delete this. And now we could use the bigger uh, triangle now, which is square root 2x. So its height is square root 3 times 2 also, scaled up. So then there will be square root 6 divided by 2x. And um, this ratio now is 2 thirds, right? Because vertex to a centroid is 2 thirds. So that is going to be square root uh, 6 over 3x. So that means this section. This, in, this entire section is squared th uh, 6 over 3. So that small section is squared 6 over 3 minus this uh, section. So it'll be um, squared 6 over 3 minus uh, square root 3 divided by 6x. Okay. And let's delete this part. And now we can find this small section, which is just 1 third. So multiply by one third. So that's square root six divided by six. Okay. So now we can actually find that smaller length now, right? So this is two thirds of that entire one. So x times square root three divided by two is the height, right? And then multiply by two thirds because this is two thirds of the length. So that is x square root three divided by three. And to get just this section, we need to subtract those two. So it will be x uh, squared root 3 over 3 minus the squared 6 over 6, and then x. x is just some scale factor. So it doesn't really matter because they're going to cancel in the end anyways. The x is going to cancel it out. So um, as we used before, the ratio of the side lengths is always just going to be the square root of I mean, the ratio of the areas is always the square root of the side length. It's always square root them is going to be the side length. So to get the um, side length to its area, you just need to square it. So it's going to be, so we have to find the um, bigger one to the smaller one. So it's going to be square root 6, 3 minus square root 3 over 6, x divided by this one, which is square root 3, 3 minus square root 6 over 6, x then we have to square this ratio. Okay, so let's kind of delete all this because we don't need it anymore. And now we can just work with this. So first off, we're going to cancel out the x's. As I said before, they'll cancel each other out. And let's uh, put this as 2 squared 6 minus um, squared 3 over 6. And this all divided by um, 2 squared root 3 minus square root 6 over 6. Still squared. So the 6 cancel each other out. Right? And now we could just have 2 squared root 6 minus square root 3. And we could just square each of them individually. So this is going to be 4, 24. That's a 3. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12, so 12 square root 2. 4, 12, 6, uh, minus 4, 12 square root 2. Okay, so simplifying that, that's 27 minus 12 square root 2 over um, 18 minus 12 square root 2, which they're both divisible by 3, so they're all divisible by 3, so divide by 3. So that's 9 minus 4 square root 2. And uh, 6 minus 4 square root 2. Okay, so we need to rationalize this fraction. I mean this radical. So um, we need to multiply by its co uh, complex conjugate. I mean by its conjugate. So multiply by 6 plus 4 square root 2. 6 plus 4 square root 2. So 9 times 6 is 54. That's uh, 36, that's a negative 24, so that's plus 12. Minus 16, minus 32. 
and this one's 36. Uh, those two cancel out, so that's minus 16 minus 32. So that is going to become a 22 plus 12 square root 2, and that's going to be 4. So divide by 2, 11 plus 2 square root 2 is going to be 2. Oh, sorry, 6. Sorry about that. Divide by 2. Right, simplified. So k is equal to 11, uh, w is equal to 6, p is equal to 2, and q equals 2. So then add those together, that's 4, that's 10, that's uh, plus 11 is 21. So that's your answer for number 14. Okay, that took a lot of time, but generally if you're taking this, you probably want to skip 14 because it takes a lot of work. Okay, number 15. In a C E. okay, let's draw this picture. Um, the A, A, D, C, C, F, and B, E are all congruent at G. A, B, and B, C is 3 fourths. And then C, D to D, E is 2, 5. And the ratio E, F to... So we have to find the ratio E, F to F, A. Okay, so the key word in this question is concurrent in the first sentence. Concurrent tells us that we have to use something called Seves theorem. Is, is the theorem of congruency. So what it says is that uh, if we have something, let's just draw a general case again. A, B, C, D, E, F. It tells us that A divided by B times C divided by D times E divided by F is equal to 1. That's all it is. That's Seves theorem. So using that idea of this theorem, let's delete all this. That means 3 divided by 4 times 2 divided by 5, times the ratio that we want, well, let's just call it x, right? it's just this divided by this, which is just ef divided by fa, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 1. So this one is going to come out as uh, 2, 2, so that's 2 on the bottom, so that's 3 over 10, times x is equal to 1. That means x is equal to 10 over 3. And that's your answer for number 15. And it's basically just that simple, you just need to know the theorem. Number 16. The figure shows two semicircles with a center P and M. Uh, let's just draw this first piece before I say anything else. So something like this. I'm not the best artist, so please don't hate. <laughs> and here and here. And ray DE is tangent to E and F, and PB is 6. So this is also 6 because that's a radius. And BC is a diameter, which is also 6, so this is 3 and this is 3. And let's call that x. Okay, so let's put the point of congruence, uh, point of tangency right here. And let's draw a line for those. So when it's tangent, that means this is 90 degrees. So what you see here is that since they share a 90 degrees and they both share this angle right here, that means these two angles are the same. Oh, sorry, they're not 90 degrees. These two angles are the same. So that tells us that these two are similar triangles. So we use proportions. So this side length is a radius, which is 6. The side length is also a radius of the smaller one, which is 3. So proportion-wise, using the radius, which is 6, over the entire thing, 6 plus 3 plus 3 is 12 plus x is equal to this proportion, which is 3, divided by uh, 3 plus x. Cross multiply, 18 plus 6x equals 36 plus 3x. It's equal to uh, 3x, 18, so x equals 6. So we know x is equal to 6 now. So um, they're looking for de. So they're looking for this length right here. So we could just use the Pythagorean theorem, right? This is a right triangle. So um, question mark squared plus 3 squared, which is 9, equals uh, 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 squared is 81. So question mark is equal to... 81 minus 9, which is 72, and square root 72 is equal to um, uh, 6 square root 2. And that is your answer for number 16. Number 17. The supplement of an angle, so the sup let's say our angle is x, so the supplement is 180 minus that angle, is 26 uh, degrees less. So if it's less, to make it equal, you add the 26, then the supplement of the complement of the angle. So the complement of an angle is 90 minus x. So the supplement of the complement is 180 minus that. Okay, so 180. Oh, actually, add those two. So that's 206 minus x is equal to 180 
oh sorry, 180 minus 90 is 90, and then minus a negative x and plus x. So that gets up to 2x is equal to 116, so x is equal to uh, 58. And find the degree measure of the complement of the angle. So the complement of the angle is 90 minus x, so substitute that in. So that's equal to 32. So that's your answer for number 17. Okay, be sure that you read the question because sometimes you might just answer what is the angle, but they're asking for something else, the complement of the angle. Number 18, determine the number of diagonals in the convex polygons with 18 sides. So uh, the formula is just n, n minus 3 divided by 2, where n is the side lengths, the number of side lengths. So n is 18 times um, 15 divided by 2. So that's 9 times 15, that's 135. So you have 135 diagonals. So this just the general formula, the number of diagonals given the amount of side lengths. So number 19, the longer base of a, a isosceles trapezoid is equal to the length of the diagonal of the trapezoid. The shorter base of the uh, trapezoid is equal to the altitude. And the longer base is 8 more than the length of the shorter base. Determine the exact perimeter. Okay, so let's draw the isosceles trapezoid. So usually when there is isosceles trapezoid, I like to draw two lines that are at the altitude. Okay, and the reason I do that is because these two sides are the same. So then uh, when they give me this length, I can put it down here and then put everything else. So let's call this one x. So they said that the shorter base is equal to the altitude. And they said that the longer base is 8 more than the shorter base. So if this is x and it's 8 more, then you have to split the 8 into a 4 and a 4 here. Okay. And they said that the um, longer base in the first sentence is equal to the length of the diagonal. So this is x plus 8. So using this triangle and the Pythagorean theorem, we will get uh, x plus 4 squared plus x squared is equal to x plus 8 squared. So that is um, x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus this x squared, so this is 2x squared. So this one's x squared, 16x plus 64. Subtracting it, x squared minus 8x minus 48. That should factor out as um, x minus 12 and x plus 4. So that means x equals 12. So if x is equal to 12, um, Let's kind of cancel out this is 12. This is 12. This is 12. So to get the perimeter, we already have these two side lengths. Now we just need to find these two, which are isosceles. So we just multiply two. So this is 4 times, uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, 4 squared plus 12 squared, square root. So that's 16, that's 144. So 16 plus 144 is 160, which is 4 square root 10. So this is 4 square root 10, and this is 4 square root 10. So the perimeter is 4 square root 10 plus 4 square root 10, 8 square root 10, 12 plus 12 plus 4 plus 4, so 16 plus 16 is 32. And that is your answer to number 19, 32 plus 8 square root 10, or 8 square root 10 plus 32, it doesn't really matter. Number 20, finally, okay, the last question. The region bounded by y equals 3 fourth x. Okay, so let's draw this. The x axis, okay, and x equals uh, 3k. So this one's 3k. Since this is a slope of 3 fourths, that means uh, 3 fourths times uh, 3k is going to be equal to 9k divided by 4, right? Because 3k divided by 4 divided by, uh, divided by 3k is equal to uh, 3 fourths, which is our slope. K and K is positive, and it's rotated 360 around the x-axis. Okay. The numerical lateral um, area of the resulting solid is 5 pi. So the la okay. So imagine we rotate this 360, like it goes outside the page and then like rotates around. What would that look like? Well, that's just a cone, right? So this is our axis, and we rotate it around here. So that's a cone. So our lateral area is just the area of this like triangle part, this cone part, right? Not the circle, without the circle. So it's just this section. So the area of that is actually just going to be calculated by pi radius times slant height. Let's draw that diagram again, right? So what's our radius? It's from here to here. What's this part? Is this, right? And what is our slant height? That means this is our slant height, right? 
So using that equals phi pi. We have a pi. Our radius is 9k divided by 4. And our uh, slant height is just our hypotenuse. So square root 3k squared plus 9k divided by 4 squared. Okay, so now we just need to find k, right? And that's equal to 5 pi. So cancel out the pi's because we don't need it anymore. So 9k divided by 4. Square root. Um, this one's 9k squared. 81k squared divided by 16. Simplifying it, 9 times 16 plus 81. So this one is 9k divided by 4 times square root 225k squared divided by 16 equals 5 pi equals 5 right we cancel out the pi's already so then uh, um 9k divided by 4 times uh 15k divided by 4 because square root 225 is 15 square root 16 is 4 square root k squared is k it's 5 so we have 5 times 4 times 4 divided by 9 divided by 15 so that is k squared is equal to 16 divided by 25. So k equals square root of four, uh, 16 is 4. Square root of 27 is 3 square root 3. So multiply by square root 3 over square root 3. And that should come out as 4 square root 3. And square root 3 times square root 3 is 9. Is 3 times this 3 is 9. So we have to rationalize it. And that's your answer for number 20. 4 square root 3 divided by 9. And that basically completes everything for the 2016 Division A State Geometry. So generally what you need to know is just basic formulas like the number of diagonals and like general formulas like the lateral surface area. But you also need to understand like um, random theorems like Seva's theorem or like or maybe some stuff like I don't know, it's just still regular formulas, still some uh, polygons, I mean, uh, area similarities, right? Know the um, area of an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangles appear a lot, so know a bunch of that. No circles, so no Huron's formula, and no um, circumradius and inradius. Those are important. And there's like Viviani's theorem, which is really uh, strange that they put it in, but that's kind of important, I guess-ish. And then just know some similarities and congruences and the Pythagorean theorem, which is like the most important thing to understand. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next math record.